yeah. So can you can you plug right into the uh, router? It's in the basement. He says I, it's in the basement. I guess not. It, it won't cut off now if we keep the screen small. We had it really big, and yeah, it, it was getting. It had well, to. You went full screen. Yeah. So we'll yeah, try video it. just sucks up so much stuff. Um, well, okay. Sorry. Um, so I had just asked you how many collages you've made in your whole life. Yeah, my guess is you know because I, I also work out of books, mm -hmm. and. Um, I think it's about 3,500. Hmm. I've been making a lot. I mean, I have a lot on Long Island. And, I, you know, kind of everything I include is, that's a collage, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's I something that I've noticed. Drawings I call collages. Matthew, from a lot of uh, collage artists, most of them are uh, obsessive about collage. And just almost every artist I talk to, they can't stop making it. They'll make them day in and day out. Have you noticed that too? Yeah, it's a very, very, very obsessive activity. Yeah. Um, I, th I think there, there's a facility. Uh, well, I, I don't. Mm, that's different. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. I, I think once you get going, it's just hard to stop. Yeah, because you, you start say, collecting oh, materials. This is how you do it, and then you make one, and then you make another one, and 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 you end up you know piling them up. They have a, a tendency. To, to accumulate and breed the way, unlike paintings. Paintings say, you know, it's it's a different process, takes more time. Mm -hmm. No, a lot of it has to do with the size. People work on eight and a half by 11, cardboard, and there's a kind of a cheap, rapid way of producing them. That's why I think it's, it's like, you know, you can do one a day. There's that guy, a wonderful man named um, Randall Plowman in Kentucky. You know him? <laughs> He did the book. No. Randall Plowman? Randall Plowman, hmm. yeah. Okay. And I, uh, I, I lent the book, my book, to somebody, um, but it, I think it's called Collage. Yeah. And he, he gave me a nice, I don't know, five, six pages. Um, and he does something called Collage a Day. He's got a blog. So he oh, makes, I know him. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's Randall. So he makes them like that, sells them for. 25 bucks. They're four by four inches. Yeah, I know him. I've actually emailed with him a few times. Uh -huh. um, so, so you, Peter, you asked you know, he, where he, he to works learn. lots. Yeah, where did you go to school? I, I went to Brown University. Oh, okay. Now, now, I have a statement I sent to these other people. I'm just going to re ring it a little bit. Um, Please do. Uh, and so, so I, I can send it to you if you want to use it. But I, I gave you a printout of something with my picture on it. Did you see that? Yeah. Yes. That yeah. kind of tells my story as okay. well. Okay. Um, you know, when we... I think I can do that. And I'll call it uh, MR Next. So th this way you'll have something else if, if you want to use it. You can edit whatever you like, you know. Uh, so this I'll send... I'll send it by, uh, through the chat as well. That should be okay. Hey, you know, when we were doing um, the call for entries, I think one of the number one questions, or one of the questions that we got, was is people didn't really know what collage is. And I think that's kind of, I guess, valid since how collage has kind of changed with the digital age. Did you have any kind of insights on that, or any kind of... You know? in, in France, no, because collage is a French word. Mm. Coal is French for glue. Mm. And you, like when you take off in an, uh, in an airplane, uh, they call it décollage, which means you unglue yourself from the ground. Mm. Mm. You take off. Um, so people here, I mean, there's a long history of collage in France, you know, Picasso and Brock were basically doing it, and um, they, they kind of invented it and made it a, um, oh, you just, you just sent me an email. Did it finally go through? <laughs> it was taking forever to send. Oh, yeah. Yara Vano's account. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so how did you find yourself in France? 
Well, I, I, did, I told you I went to college, right? Yeah, to Brown. Brown. Mm -hmm. Went to Brown, and I studied semiotics and linguistics. Mm -hmm. So I was involved in word, image, language, you know, for a very long time. And a little bit of philosophy, a little bit of religion. But I was always um, hanging around the art department, and I kind of weaseled my way in there. I didn't want to take life drawing or anything, so I showed up with a, a stack of books. And I said to the, this teacher, Roger Mayer, I want to paint. So let me in the class. And he went through the books, and after about 20 minutes, he said, okay, you had you to do prerequisites for these classes. So they gave me a space and all the canvas I wanted. I had to buy my own paint. And then I just started right there. One of the first assignments they gave us was to take bits of wallpaper and make a collage. And I was like, I could do that. And so I made kind of a Fernand Leger uh, collage of these three people. I don't have a picture of it. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere. I don't know where. Um, these three kind of egg-shaped people. It's a man and a woman. It's, they're like two men competing for this woman, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Um, and then um, I just continued from there. I mean, I was always working out of notebooks and still do. Uh, but then the idea of painting on canvas was kind of interesting. And, and I found myself painting on all sorts of wood that I found. Mm. So then the idea of finding stuff and really looking for things and surfaces I could paint on or glue to or put together or I started constructing things, making wood assemblages. Um, you know, it just grew from there and then I began to read you know, quite a bit more about it and of course I was studying that stuff. Uh, and the next thing I knew I was in France. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I visited France and then I, uh, I worked also as a writer, publishing magazines, did a certain amount of designing, wrote about business quite a bit. I guess that has nothing to do with collage, but it does have a little bit to do with uh, advertising. And you're really, I, that's what I wrote about. And you're, and you're really on top of the networking and then promoting your, your own work and promoting the shows you're in. And I, th I think I'm pretty good at it because um, I, I'm a writer and I, I know what translates into some kind of interest mm. and and the the key is not to overdo it i mean i have been known to overdo it a bit but and i also find that it, it always works out better when you include lots of people and you say this is this is good for everybody right so it's not just about you and it's you're not always pointing a finger at you look at me look at me mm -hmm. but i still tend to do that because i mean how else are you going to break through an enormous amount of clutter mm -hmm. um, so anyway as so I came to France in, about 20 years ago and I had a certain amount of French artist friends here some I had written about I, I continue my job writing about advertising in particular direct marketing direct mail so the, the idea of sending mail to me well to a lot of people uh, you know the whole mail art movement founded mostly by Ray Johnson became a, a, an incredible way to, to send art and communicate all sorts of things free mm. through the mail. And Ray, Ray Johnson, you know, he's was, you know, a very powerful influence for many collage artists and I mean for many, many different ways. So um, and I knew him in New York and uh, I had written about him quite a bit. I was very influenced by how he behaved with his mail and how he would structure things and, or unstructure them or allow things to happen. And through him, I learned quite a bit about Dada, Fluxus, conceptual art, and many other people because he knew folks. And there was a, a generosity with him. So uh, when I moved to France, that continued. And then, of course, he died. Um, and it was in uh, 2009 we did a show that um, touched upon his project called A Book About Death. Hmm. So did you hear about that? I read about it in that interview that you just did with... Oh, the, the Be Uncut thing. Be Uncut, mm -hmm. Yeah, so is that, now that, that's a, that show, it, it uses male art. It talks about Ray. The name of the project is really Ray's. 
Mm. And, and it's a book about death. It's unbound. So it's literary. It's single pages like Ray's book was unbound. Um, it's image and words. I mean, things that, you know, I've done. And then I asked people to send in 500 cards to the gallery. We got 487 from all over the world. Mm. Yeah. And I had to really turn the screws on, you know, Flickr and Facebook and Twitter and mm. LinkedIn. Or I call people up. I talk to people. I handed them things. You know, I, I, I had done a mail event before. Mm. So I, I kind of knew what that took, but I had a big gallery now. The woman who ran it had a, a very strong connection to Fluxus Art, Emily Harvey. She represented lots of those people, and she knew of Ray. She knew Ray. Um, she never showed his work. Uh, the man who's d directing it, Christian Zatrek, very involved in Fluxus, uh, and a wonderful guy, also a French man. Um, and he said to me, because I said I'd like to do a show, he said, Matthew, that'd be great, but what we don't want is, in the gallery, is some artist who comes, hangs his work, and waits around for people to buy it. So well, I was in New York in January 2009, and we were at this, um, well, I guess it was a student show, but it, it occupied a whole building. And we were walking up and down, and, and I had made the, you know, the pitch to him about doing something in the space, and then he kind of pushed back a bit and said, okay, but don't make it, you know, personal slash commercial. So I said, give me a minute. And I had this thought, this blast. I said, okay, here's my idea. We do something called a book about death. I invite artists all over the world to send 500 cards and I give them away. And the project is linked. And it's all free. Mm -hmm. There's no money. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. he said, do it. <laughs> and that's what I did. And, and in Australia in October, that will be the 27th show around the world. Wow. So uh, there are about 5,000 artists who have been part of this thing. Yeah. It's always free. We were in Brazil, Wales, uh, Mexicali, Baja California, Los Angeles, Queens Museum, South Carolina, uh, Omaha, Nebraska, um, Italy. Maybe the next one should be. Uh, in lots of places. Yeah. So, <laughs> Yugoslavia. You know, it, it's creeping around. Australia is kind of big. That's kind of uh, real fun. Mm -hmm. And um, so, and that's like a big collage. It's like what Ray would call a collage of people. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. right. And, so, what, what and plus, it generated. Um, an enormous amount of community in some yeah. communities. Oh, we had one in Seattle oh. and one in Arizona. Now, all these shows, they just many, and, and, and all the artists become these curators, mm -hmm. which yeah. empowers them. And the thing is, it's the same spirit. I, I'm all for people trying to make money as, you know, speaker's fees or whatever they want to do is, is fine with me. Um, but in general, uh, the shows have been run at like zero uh, profit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, this woman on Long Island uh, wanted to have a New, New Orleans uh, jazz band. You know, one of those uh, like the, in, when you when you die in New Orleans, apparently you uh, you hire a band and they play jazz music as they bring your coffin to the cemetery. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of a line of horns and lots of brass. Yeah. So she said, well, I can get a band for 800 bucks or 1,000 bucks. And so we did a Kickstarter and we raised enough money through the group to pay for a band. That's great. You know, so everybody was happy. The show was a success. The artist became the curator and they get a bit of a blast. Plus, there's some press involved. So that's, it's good for everybody. So the, the original show in New York, there's a film. Uh, you froze. I think we're, we're okay over here.